Do you have some wonderful images of animals or wildlife that you'd like to spark up a little bit? In this video tutorial, which is a clip from one of my weekly live streams here on YouTube, I'll show you how to use Lightroom Classic to go from this to this, increasing the exposure and punch of the image, enhancing the fur, while removing distracting elements in the background and cloning out some other unwanted bits. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you want to learn all about photo editing, you're in the right place. So if you're ready, let's get started. When you are working with any image with, and any editing program, you want to make sure that you have the histogram open for viewing. If you're in Luminar, that's an option under the view menu to hide it or show it. And here, it's just a little triangle at the top that you can hide it or show it. Okay. So I always use the histogram and recommend that you use the histogram for checking your exposure. Okay. So the first thing I did is to fix that problem of it being underexposed. And I wanted to mention this, Karen, because I looked at a few of your images in terms of what their um, shooting information was. Let me go back here. Okay, so this one here was shot in shutter priority, okay? And the shutter that you chose was one 640th of a second, okay? The ISO was not on automatic, I'm assuming. And what happened was, when you are in shutter priority, the camera will take a bad exposure, as you can see, okay? So in this case, it maxed out to the biggest aperture that it could based on the lens that you're using. And because you weren't on auto ISO, it couldn't increase the ISO, so you ended up with a dark exposure. If you wanna shoot in shutter priority, I generally don't use shutter priority, almost never, except when I'm panning. If you're gonna shoot in shutter priority, make sure that you're using auto ISO, and then that problem would have been solved here, okay? But for stuff like this that's not moving quickly, and even sports photographers use aperture priority, okay? Because you're gonna get a better exposure every time. So there's my tip for exposure. All right, so to fix this, okay, I'm not going to grab the exposure slider, okay? I'm going to do that part way, and that is adjusting the mid-tone. So remember, when we are adjusting the exposure slider, we're working on the mid-tones, okay? If you don't believe me, watch what happens when I go over the histogram in the middle here, okay? So this is the mid-tones, black over here, white over here, mid-tones in the middle. If I click and drag here, which slider is being affected? Exposure, okay? So you can click on the histogram and adjust it this way. So I'm only gonna go a little bit with the exposure. Then I'm gonna use my shift double trick shift double click trick <laughs> it's a tongue twister okay so what you want to do is hover over the word white hold down the shift key double click okay now it's on it's set what's called the white point and then the black point okay so i'm going to do one edit in lightroom and then i'm going to do another a different image in luminar so we alternate okay so what this has done, and I'm holding down the Alt Option key, and that will show me any clipping warnings, is it's put the sliders for white as high as it goes without clipping. Can you see that? If I go further, it starts to clip. And the same with blacks. There's a little bit of black clipping, but I'm actually gonna clip more. I'm gonna take it a little bit farther, okay? So look at the big difference here, okay? So all I did, oops, aha. I need to reset my history, okay? I'm gonna set this to the before, okay? So my before and after is showing me the wrong thing because it's showing me the after of the other version, okay? So before and after of just these three sliders, right? Okay? So really quickly, you can adjust the exposure, okay? But I've only gone to plus 0.5 on the exposure. If I don't do the whites and the blacks, I have to go a lot higher with the exposure up to one and a half, right? So do your whites and your blacks and then keep the exposure slider to the minimal because the farther you take it, the more grain you're going to get, okay? So by limiting um, your ISO to 500, you ended up with a dark exposure. If you had shot at 1,000 or 2,000 ISO, yes, you're gonna get some noise, but you will on an underexposed image as well. 
if I log, if I zoom in here, I don't know if you could see that. See, it's pretty noisy and that's only 500 ISO. And that has to do with the underexposure, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna warm it up a little bit because lines should be brown, right? It looks a little blue, like so. And then playing with the magenta just a little bit. So the color looks pretty good. All right, now that I've got the general exposure set, uh, I'm going to add an edge vignette. And this is a preset that I've created. So if you're interested in my Lightroom presets, Rob, if you could please post a link to our Lightroom presets, right? Okay, so um, I just put a quick vignette on. And if you don't have the presets, you can just go to the effects panel and that's what is creating the uh, vignette here, okay? As for getting rid of some of these sticks and things, right? Whenever you're dealing with stuff that you need to clone out, I'm gonna use the cloning and healing tool in here. And I'm gonna use the first one, which is the new thing in Lightroom, which is the content aware cloning tool, okay? Or re spot removal, right? So I'm not sure if you can see how big my, my circle is, my mouse cursor here, right? So it's kind of coming and going. I'm not sure why. I want it just bigger than the stick. And I'm only going to go part way here. And its job is to try and fill it in okay, with what it thinks is going to look good. That actually looks pretty good, right? If you're not happy with it, you can click refresh. I like what it's done, except there's this part here that sort of doesn't match anymore. So I'm just going to get rid of that one as well. And that one I am going to refresh. And all it does is just fills it with something different, okay? Now I'm just going to move the image and do the next section of the stick. So I generally wouldn't do this whole thing in one sort of pass. I would do a couple of passes, okay? You'll find you'll get better results if you don't try and clone a large thing all at once. And that applies in Luminar as well when you're using the erase tool. Okay, so the erase tool would do the same job here and it does an excellent job. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this stick. So I'm gonna do the top part first and I'm just letting Lightroom do its job and fill in the bits. Okay, that one maybe a little bit refresh. I think I missed part of it. Now notice I can't overlap this one. So you have to go below it and paint up into it. So once you have one that needs to overlap, right? I want to make sure his fur looks okay. There, that looks better. Okay, now this one here that's kind of coming out of his nose, I want to get rid of this one as well, but same thing. I don't want to do the whole thing at once. So I'm going to do a piece of it, see how it does. That looks good. And then I'm going to do another little piece. See how that one goes. I'm looking for, does it blend? And can I see that something's been done? Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna get a smaller brush and I'm just gonna go right in there in his whiskers, right? That looks good. Now I can do the bottom part like so, okay? So turning that off, Let's see, see the difference? We got rid of that big stick, okay? I'm also gonna get rid of these ones over here, or I might choose to crop the image a little bit. So if I crop it like so, I can get rid of these things on the left and not worry about it so much, okay? I might get rid of this one as well. So this is kinds of things where um, it takes your image from good to great, okay, when you're paying attention to these kinds of details. Now this stick here that's going over the lion might be trickier. So I'm gonna try the first section here. This is one where you might have to go to Photoshop, okay? I was able to do a pretty decent job with Lightroom previously, and I'm just, you know, using the refresh. You might have to go to the healing tool instead, right? So I want to try and match the fur a little better. Let me feather that. Okay, so feather is how soft is the edge of the brush. That looks a little better. Okay, 
Again, I need to make sure I get all of the dark part. And when you're using this tool, when you're using the healing tool, you have to choose where to place the source. Okay, so I'm choosing the source like so. And I'm just doing it little by little here. This one might be tricky because I need white fur, and I don't know that I have any white fur to pull from. Right. Oh, that looks pretty good. See how that matched up nicely with his paw there? All right, let's do this section here. Um, this one I might just draw a smaller circle. I'm going to go a little smaller and then just move it down. Okay. Now we're getting there. See how it just build on it slowly? I'm going to do another one about the same size. Build on that slowly. And let's work over here. Get a little more white on his fur. And now we're sort of getting something that looks pretty darn good, right? I'm just going to try and match up with his paw here. Oh, I'm getting that other stick, so I don't want that. I'm going to get rid of this stick first. Okay, so whenever you're doing this kind of detailed cloning, have patience, right? Have patience and do it little by little. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at how it looks overall. Okay, so backing out. There's our before and after. And the fur looks pretty realistic, right? Now once we're done the cloning, if you're not able to do that with Lightroom, Take it into Photoshop and you have more tools there. And you can use layers and um, make sure that you do non-destructive editing. So if you go to Photoshop, make sure that you do this workflow. Right click, choose edit in and open as a smart object. Okay. Then anything that you do in terms of cloning, do it on a blank layer. Okay. So do your cloning on a blank layer and just make sure that it's set to all layers and your editing will be non-destructive. It'll save you, you a PSD, come back into Lightroom and you can do any other editing you want to do. Okay. The only other thing that I might do here is go into the HSL panel. Here you can do things like shifting the color. So if I want to darken the green, Okay. I can adjust the luminance of green and that darkens that background, right? Yellow as well. And then orange is the lion's fur, okay? Like so. I might do um, a quick subject select. So I might do a mask and it did a pretty good job of picking him because I want to give him more texture. So I'm going to increase the clarity and the texture Right, and see what that's doing. Right, if I turn that off, see how look at his fur and his face. It's bringing out the texture in the fur and him. Okay, and we can also do. I'm just going to name this lion. The background. If we want to blur the background even more. Okay, now I don't want to blur this part in the front here. Okay, so I'm going to subtract. I'm going to make sure that he doesn't have the lion selected. And then I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and just make sure I don't have this corner here. So I want this front grass that he's sitting on to be sharp. Okay? So I'm going to go about like that. So what I'm going to do now is lower the clarity and the texture. And you can also lower dehaze. Now it tends to lighten everything. So you can then lower the exposure. But see what it's doing is basically minimizing that background a little bit. Okay. A little too much dehaze, I think. It's minimizing and darkening that background, right? Even more. So all of these things are designed to make the subject stand out. Now that I'm looking at it, I think his face is a little dark. So I'm just going to do a radial gradient right about there. I just want to brighten this part of his face. So I think that's shadows. See that? Okay. So shadows and a little bit of exposure. And that brightens his face up. Okay. So there's our full before and after. And how long did that take me? 10 minutes? Check out my complete Lightroom course for everything you need to know about Lightroom Classic. 
There's a link below for you in the description area. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want to learn Lightroom Classic from start to finish, then it might just be the course for you. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, check out one on the screen now.